Hi, my name is Jara. I teach people how to garden and grow food. Today I want to show you how to grow these beautiful Napa cabbages. So this is my complete growing guide on how to grow Napa cabbages all the way from seed to harvest. Napa cabbages are a pretty easy crop for beginner gardeners and you get really fast results from seed. I'm usually harvesting them anywhere between two and a half to three months. And Napa cabbages are easier to grow than like the standard heading cabbages like your savoys or the red cabbages. So I recommend you start out with these first and then once you master growing the Napa cabbages, you can move up to your standard heading cabbages. I love growing Napa cabbages because there is so much that I can do with them. I love to steam them with some ginger, add them to stir fries or soups, or you can preserve them by making kimchi. And just so you know, you can find a copy of this growing guide on my website, jarasgarden.com, along with monthly growing guides and also heirloom seeds and plants that I grow here and show in my own garden. So let's talk about cultivar selection. To be honest with you, there's not much difference between all the different types of seeds that you can find for Napa cabbages. The only two main things I would say is like their leaf structure. Um, typically you will find Napa cabbages that are described as being round or like barrel shaped. So that's like the typical Napa cabbage that you find in the grocery store. And here's an example of that one. So as you can see, it has a lot of flat leaves at the bottom to collect sunlight so that it could output this um, Napa cabbage head in the middle. And then you have some other cultivars that are a little bit more like loose leafed. Um, they do kind of form like an upper, upright structure, but it's not like a compact head like this cultivar right here. It's just loose leaf, but use them both the same way. And as far as colors, most of them come in green. <laughs> most heirloom varieties are green. Some of them might be a little bit lighter green or almost like yellow, like this one in here in the center, it's kind of turning yellow. I have seen some gorgeous ones that are like purple or red, but those are hybrids. I have grown them before because quite honestly, they are beautiful, but I really lean on heirloom seeds because I like to save my own seeds and you can't really save hybrid seeds. I mean, you could and you could plant them and you, something will grow out of that, but you just don't know what you're going to get. The genetics are pretty much mixed with that. And I like to know what I'm getting every time. So that is why I specifically like to grow the heirlooms. Okay, so let's talk about how to start Napa cabbages from seed. I'm going to explain two different ways, direct sowing or starting them in seed trays. For direct sowing, you're going to sprinkle your seeds outdoors as soon as your average last spring frost date has passed. Or as another guide, you're going to want to sprinkle them outdoors as soon as your average high maximum temperature falls below 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you're not sure what that is, you can go to a website called plantmaps.com and I'll link it below. You're going to put in your zip code and it's going to give you lots of different information about your garden. But if you look at the very bottom, there's a chart and it shows every single month the average maximum temperature and the average lowest temperature. So I just look at that calendar and I look for whatever month finally hits 80 degrees or below as the average highest temperature. And for me here in my zone 9B garden, that is the month of November all the way through about March. So my game plan is to start direct sowing the seeds outdoors in November. And let me show you how I direct sow the seeds. First off, you're going to want to clear a patch, right? Um, no weeds or anything like that. They'll compete with your little seedlings. And you're just going to kind of rake up the soil surface, loosen it up. All right, so once everything is nice and loosened up and cleaned, you're gonna sprinkle a bunch of blood meal there. And I like to use blood meal. It's an organic fertilizer. It's very high in nitrogen. Whenever I'm growing something for its leaves, like to eat its leaves, I just use a lot of blood meal. It promotes very lush, leafy green growth. And I just eyeball this, you guys, it's organic. There's no way you can like overdose your plants on organic fertilizers. So that's why I like to use them so much. So just sprinkle some in there and then you're gonna work it into the soil surface. Okay, then we're gonna get the seeds right here. This is a cultivar called Matsushima number no. two. It's a heading type of Napa cabbage, so it forms that nice barrel head, um, not so much as like the loose leaf ones. And you're gonna take some seeds. They're very tiny, by the way. They're like little black dots. And you're just gonna sprinkle them around in this area. You don't need too many. The seeds for Napa cabbages are very easy to germinate. 
And then you're just gonna kind of scratch those seeds gently into the surface. They don't have to be like covered 100% by soil. You just wanna lightly scratch them in. And then I like to pat things down. That way I make sure the seeds have good contact with the soil. And then you're gonna water this. You wanna make sure that this soil stays nice and moist so that the seeds will germinate. They're pretty fast to germinate. Usually I get germination in like three days, but sometimes it could take a little bit longer depending on your temperatures outdoors. Um, it could be as long as maybe around 10 days, but usually three to five days is what I see. Once they get growing, you're gonna wanna thin out the seeds a little bit. I find that Napa cabbages really need like one plant per square foot or you know space them one foot apart especially the ones that form those tight barrel head type formations because they leaf out they have a like a broad flat leaf structure it collects sunlight and helps them grow that head in the center and if you plant too many of them close together they don't have the space or the resources to like grow that nice big head so just make sure you just thin them out to about one foot apart Sometimes you might find transplants in your local, you know, nurseries, and that is totally fine if you want to just start off with some transplants. I recommend that you plan to actually plant them into your garden about 12 weeks before your first winter frost date. Or you can transplant them outdoors when your average maximum temperature is 80 degrees or below. But I've noticed the price of transplants are rising significantly. Like it's ridiculous how much they're charging for like a little set of four transplants when these are so easy to start from seed. So save yourself a lot of money and start these from seed. To start them from seeds, you're gonna wanna sow them indoors about eight weeks before whatever date you want to be putting them into the garden. As an example, like I mentioned before in my zone 9B garden, November is the month for me where the average high temperature finally falls below 80 degrees or below. So I'm going to backtrack eight weeks from there, which lands me in the month of September. Now, one thing about, especially if you're in the South, your zones eight and up, I'm in zone 9B, it's still really, really hot outside. So to start seeds outside for anything brassicas is not a good idea. They are very susceptible to like being stunted in growth if they're exposed to too much heat. I start all my seeds for brassicas in the month of September inside my um, screen porch. This is my screen porch and I have all these shelving units and everything and um, I don't use grow lights. This is um, shop lights. What you want to look for is something that at least has 5,000 kelvins. That's the daylight temperature range. When I start seeds for the Napa cabbages, I like to use these 72 cell seed trays. This is usually enough room for them to last eight weeks. And just as an example, so you know what they look like, once the seeds germinate, they will look like this. This is actually tatsoi, but they, they look exactly the same. They're part of the brassicas family. And when they germinate, they kind of have these like flat, kind of curved um, leaf shapes. This is uh, seven days old right here. And I just sprinkle a whole bunch of seeds in here. I pat them down onto the soil surface and that's it. I don't really cover them with you know a lot of soil or anything like that. They germinate pretty quickly. And then keep them well watered, obviously, so that it will speed up germination. As you can see, a bunch of them have sprouted in each cell. Once they start growing a little bit bigger in size, I would thin these out to like two seedlings. And then once you transplant them into your garden, thin it out to just one. So these just sprouted and right now they have their first set of leaves. These are called cotyledons. They're not actual, like the actual adult mature size leaf for this crop. Um, so once they start growing the first set of true leaves, that's when you're going to start fertilizing your seedlings just to give them a really good head start and rapid growth. And this is lettuce here, but just to give you an idea how different the leaf shape is once it starts growing the mature set of leaves, um, they don't have the cotyledons anymore. So that's how you know it's time to start fertilizing. And fertilizing the seedlings, I mean, you could use whatever liquid fertilizer you prefer. But since I'm growing this to eat the greens, nitrogen is really important to me. So I start fertilizing them with something rich in nitrogen and fish fertilizer is great for that. So whatever you use though, whatever liquid fertilizer you decide to use, you're gonna fertilize your seedlings at half the strength of whatever the directions say. So for this fish fertilizer, it says two tablespoons per gallon of water. So I'm gonna put one tablespoon per gallon of water to fertilize my seedlings and I would fertilize the seedlings about once a week. If you're enjoying this video and would like to learn more about gardening, make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you get notified of every time I post new videos. Your support is greatly appreciated and motivates me to create more gardening videos just like this one.
All right, so let's talk about sun and soil requirements. So any kind of crop that I'm growing to eat, it's leafy greens. It's not producing like a tomato, like a fruit like that. They basically just need six hours of sunlight. And I find if they get too much sun, it'll actually burn the leaves. You'll start to notice like burnt edges on the leaves. And with a lot of brassicas, like these Napa cabbages, tatsoi, bok choy, all of that kind of thing, if they get too much sunlight, which usually means they're getting too much heat, it will encourage the plant to bolt, which means it's going to start its flowering process. And that happens when the middle will send out like a, a long stem and it starts flowering. That means it's kind of past its prime for eating in general. You want to harvest this before it starts its flowering stage. Since I'm in Florida, it's really hot here. So I find that my Napa cabbages grow much, much better in an area that gets a lot of bright morning sun, but afternoon shade because the afternoon sun is definitely the most intense. And as far as soil requirements, I mean, you just want a nice fluffy soil. Lots of organic matter is important, but I find that they actually grow pretty well in sandy soil since it's so well draining. You just have to make sure that you're watering it because they do not like to wilt and run out of water these ones are wilting because i just harvested them but anyways they do like a substantial amount of water cabbages are 90 percent water so if you notice them wilting definitely give them some water but they do best when they have a nice consistent supply of water like when you put uh, drip tape i like to use the flat drip tapes and put them on an automatic watering system because that guarantees they're getting a nice consistent supply nice consistent watering will also help prevent bolting the ideal temperature range for growing Napa cabbages is anywhere between 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In my zone 9B garden, that is the months of November through March. They can also survive some light frost, but ideally they don't do very well once the temperatures drop below 26 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you want to keep your harvest going, you can succession sow the seeds. I would start seeds about once every month. Let's talk about pruning. So whenever you see diseased or damaged leaves, you're going to remove them. They're not doing anything good for that plant. Napa cabbages are susceptible to lots of different types of leaf diseases. You've got powdery mildew, blight. I mean, there's a lot. I give up trying to identify them because in my Florida garden, we just get them all. If you do see leaf diseases, get rid of that leaf. It is now a host for that pathogen and it will spread to the rest of your plant. And whenever you see leaves that are heavily damaged by pests, which in my case is most likely worms, that's what I see most common, and you will probably get worms at some point, so I'll talk about that in a bit. But whenever you see leaves heavily damaged by worms, you're going to want to remove those as well. I don't know if there's research to support this, but myself and other gardeners feel that the heavily diseased or you know eaten up leaves attract even more pests. They're kind of attracted to plants that are stressed out. Let's talk about some of the pests that you're going to encounter. Number one is worms. Okay, I'm in Florida. We get worms everywhere. And a lot of people ask me, like, how do I mitigate that so well in my garden? Because I don't really spray for with anything. Definitely not chemicals that are, like, not organic. And I'll explain a couple things. First off, growing Napa cabbages or any kind of brassicas in general during the right time of the year. So, like I said, their optimal growing temperatures is when whenever the, the maximum highs are below 80s. And that's our colder time of the year, which means there's less pest pressure anyways. And as I walk through my garden on a daily basis, I am checking for worm damage, whether that be on my Napa cabbages or my tomatoes or whatever else I'm growing, because that is a sign that the worm population is starting to explode in my garden and I need to nip it in the butt right away. The longer you wait to finally treat for them, the more time you're giving them to populate up your garden, which will require more spraying than just maybe just one or two applications. And most of the time you're not even gonna find these worms because they tend to be nocturnal, but evidence of them is definitely chewed up leaves or you might find like little tiny balls that are yellow or even black that is worm poop to treat for the worms i use bt which stands for bacillus thuringiensis it's a bacteria that when it's sprayed on these leaves the worms are going to eat it they're going to chew it up and it disrupts their digestive system killing the worm you could also use spinosad you could also use spinosad which is bt but with the added benefit that it also kills worms on contact both of these products are considered organic and they are OMRI rated, but no matter what you're spraying in your garden, I highly recommend that you wait until like dusk when all the pollinators are gone at the evening time, just to make sure you're not affecting them in some way. And I've been using BT and Spinosad for years in my garden. I personally have not noticed an effect on the pollinators. 
and I have looked up research on this. There's studies that show, yes, it has an effect and studies that show it doesn't. So in general, nobody really knows. So just err on caution here. The good thing is that BT and spinosad easily wash off from your plants. So just don't spray them within like seven to 10 days of whenever you plan on harvesting them. You might encounter slugs in your garden. They love to munch on these types of leafy greens. I personally don't have a slug problem in my garden, but I know a lot of gardeners do. In that case, I recommend you create some beer traps. Aphids are also gonna be a huge problem. They love Napa cabbages because this is a high water content and they like to suck on all those juices. I noticed that I definitely get a bad aphid problem in late spring. I am usually not growing Napa cabbages in late spring, so I don't get them too bad. But if I do get aphids, I always suggest number one, it's probably an ant problem because ants actually like to eat the sweet secretions <laughs> that the aphids produce. And so they basically farm them and protect them from, you know, other predatory beneficial insects that might want to eat up those aphids. So first off, treat for the ants. I like to use the green little ant traps that have like a stake in the bottom and I'll just pop them in in random places around my garden. I've also heard other gardeners spray with neem oil or you can make sprays with peppermint or rosemary essential oils. Um, supposedly those strong smells uh, deter a lot of pests. To be honest with you, I really hate to treat my aphids because they also attract a lot of beneficial insects that like to eat them, like ladybugs. So normally when I'm examining my plants that have a heavy aphid infestation, I will find tons of ladybugs. And I want those to stay in my garden. I don't wanna kill them. So I don't <laughs> treat for the aphids unless the problem is super severe. They're really eating down my crops or like causing, you know, for example, my beans to be misshapen. So since I don't like to treat for them, I prefer to plant a ton of what I call trap crops. And that's like nasturtiums and sunflowers. So aphids will go bother and eat up my nasturtiums and then leave my veggie crops alone. Since I know that every year I see a lot of aphids in late spring, I make sure that I pre-grow all of my nasturtiums and have them like growing in my garden all over the place by the time late spring rolls around. Let's talk about fertilizing your Napa cabbages. So, um, like I said, if you're growing something to eat its leafy greens, you really just need to focus on things that are high in nitrogen. So initial, if you are, you know, direct sowing the seeds, you're going to sprinkle in some um, blood meal or whatever, something high in nitrogen into that soil. But if you are starting things from transplants or growing your own transplants, just make sure you put a nice big handful of blood meal in the transplanting hole, mix it up with the soil a little bit, and then plant your transplants in there. And for the smaller leafy greens like tatsoys and bok choys, mustard greens, things like that, usually that one big um, handful of blood meal in the transplanting hole is more than enough to get it through the entire growing season. But for Napa cabbages, they're forming big heads. So I want to give them an extra boost halfway through its growing cycle, which is about one and a half months through. I will sprinkle at the base some organic granular fertilizer, something balanced that has, you know, nitrogen, phosphorus and phosphate all mixed up in there. I have a tendency to really use um, Espoma brand products because that's just what I find locally like all over the place. But something like that, an organic granular fertilizer, you're gonna sprinkle it around the base. I just eyeball it. And it's gonna break down slowly over time and continuously feed your Napa cabbages, which will help promote a lot of big growth. All right, so if you followed all my tips, hopefully in about three months time, sometimes even as early as two and a half months time, you should be ready to start harvesting your Napa cabbages. And I forgot I was gonna make this video, so I already harvested mine and I felt so bad. So we're gonna pretend here. This Napa cabbage was growing in this spot when I decided to harvest it yesterday. So anyways, it was nice and big. I decided it was time to harvest. You can harvest it pretty much at any stage. I mean, you're just gonna eat it for the leafy greens. But if you want it to form some kind of head, obviously you're gonna allow the plant to remain. Don't, don't be like plucking off leaves. So that way it has enough energy to produce a nice big head. But anyways, I determined this was ready. I wanted to harvest it. And I simply just get some scissors and I cut at the base where the base of the plant um, hits the roots at soil surface basically. And you're just gonna cut it off right there. And then I leave the roots intact in the soil because they will continue to break down and feed beneficial microorganisms in your soil. All right, so I've harvested my Napa cabbage. If you're not gonna use it right away, put it in the fridge right away or it will wilt like this one here. I had to bring this outside so I could do this video for you guys. 
So yeah, she's wilting, but I'm going to set it in a container with some water and that'll perk back up. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot and you can grow some beautiful Napa cabbages. If you have any tips or tricks for me or, you know, products you like to use with your Napa cabbages or just certain techniques or even like cultivars that are your absolute favorite, just comment below. I learned just as much from you guys as you do from me.